and there we have it guys so all of my favorite applications are now running from that usb drive so no more worries about my fire stick is running low on storage no more worries about oh can i install this application because i don't know how much space i've got left i can now run all of my favorite applications all from that single usb drive so in this video today, let me show you how you can also set up a brand new USB drive on your Fire Stick Lite and then install applications from Downloader, install applications from FileLinked and even move applications which were previously on your internal storage over to your USB drive. So do take a moment to hit that like button, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So with all of that being said, let's get started if you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials the latest fire stick android and android tv tips and tricks then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell it's a small click from you but it makes a big difference to me thank you okay so here we have the new fire stick light and into that i've plugged in a standard otg cable now this otg cable gives us a full size usb port and in that USB port, I plugged in this Ugreen multifunction hub. And the reason why it's multifunction is we have three USB 3 ports and we have a single gigabit Ethernet port. Now, this port is plugged into my gigabit switch, which we can just see at the back there. So this really will give you a much more consistent or should I say reliable connection versus using Wi-Fi on your Fire Stick Lite or really any of those Amazon devices. Now for us to expand the storage, we can really use any USB drive or really any drive that can get enough power from these USB ports. So here, for example, I have a two terabyte Samsung drive, which is actually a USB three drive, but just in the interest of time, I'm going to use this smaller USB three drive. So let's now just plug that in and we should then see a prompt on our Fire Stick asking us to format that drive. The only requirement we have is, is just make sure this drive is already formatted as FAT32. This is just so that the Fire Stick can read it, and as soon as it can read it, it can then format this drive ready for us to use it on our Fire Stick Lite. So let's now plug that in. And do we get any notification? Yes, we do. So straight away, the Fire Stick is telling us that it can read the format of this USB drive, but it's asking you, how do you want to use it? Do you want to use it as device storage, which is like internal storage, or do you want to use it as external storage? Now, in our example, because I want to install applications to it, I want to download content onto it, I'm going to format this as device storage. So let's click on that. And this is just something that I really wish they bring over to the 4K Fire Stick because as you guys know, the only way we can get this kind of storage on the 4K Fire Stick is using manual ADB commands and all that stuff. Whereas with the Fire Stick Lite, because it is running Android 9, these features, these options are actually built into the operating system. So let's now click on device storage. Let's click on yes, because we do want to format that drive. And that will then format that drive so we can now start installing applications to it. And that's the message we want to see that our USB drive is now formatted and ready for us to install applications to. OK, so everything is now plugged in. Let's now do three quick tests. Let's firstly download an application through Downloader. Then let's download an application through File Linked. And lastly, let's move an application which was already on my internal storage over to our USB drive. Now, the first two tests are really to see that once we have configured a USB drive, do those applications automatically default to the USB drive or do they still go to internal storage? So here we are just on my website. Let's just quickly find a quick thing to download and let's just download remote ADB shell. Scroll down and click on this green download button and let's see where this application gets installed to. That's now all done. Let's now press the home key. Let's go over to settings, go to applications go to manage install applications let's scroll down uh, where did remote adb show go and there we see it guys so that icon next to the remote adb show just confirms that this application is now in fact installed to our usb drive and here we can see some of the other things i installed before just to confirm that the process was working successfully 
Okay, so downloading applications through Downloader, they will actually install directly to the USB drive. Let's now download something from File Linked. So here we are inside File Linked. I'm just going to use somebody's store here. Let's go into that and let's just install the first application in the list. So let's click on that. That comes down. Click on that again. Let's click on install. That's now installed OK. Let's now press done. Let's press the home key. Manage install applications. And where did the application install to? And here we can see once again, any application installed from file linked will in fact go directly to your USB drive. So really you don't have to worry about any kind of internal storage issues or anything like that. Once you have configured this USB drive, all of your new applications from Downloader or from File Linked will be installed directly to that USB drive. If I just open that up, just to confirm that it's working okay, and it's working absolutely fine, and all of that is being run from that USB drive. Okay, that's test number two, and let's now do that final test, which is how do we now move applications which were already on our internal storage over to that USB drive. So once again, let's go back into the same manage applications. Now the key thing you have to understand here is not all applications can actually be moved over to your USB storage. It really does depend on how they're coded and certain things will only ever run from internal storage. But here, for example, we can see file linked. Let's click on that. And there's the option there, guys. So if your application is supported, you'll actually see that option there, which means move the application from internal storage over to a USB drive. And there we can just see that the application is 30 meg in size. And if I now click on this, those 30 megs will go off our internal storage onto our USB drive. And we can see that's now finished, guys. So that application now has been moved over to that USB drive. Let's go back up one. But for example, if I look at a uh, film rise, we can see there's no option to actually move it. So once again, it does depend on the actual application. And lastly, let's now do those speed tests. So let's press the home key. Because remember, we are now using a wired connection and typically a wired connection will always give you a more reliable, consistent connection compared to wireless. Because when you are using wireless, you have to take into account factors like how far your device is from the router or router, how many obstructions or walls or, you know, how many things are in the way, because all of those things will actually affect your signal or your connection. Let's do a speed test over Wi-Fi. Okay, so test number one, we're getting around about 100 and 139 meg downstream. So test number one, 139 meg downstream and 30 meg up. And there we can just see on the top left, I'm doing this over five gigahertz Wi-Fi. Let's do test number two. So test number two, we have 136 meg downstream and the final test on Wi-Fi. You can just see guys, it is, uh, it is just uh, very inconsistent when you are doing this over wireless. And this is one of the key things, or one of the key benefits that when you do use a wired connection, you do get that more consistent, reliable performance. Okay, so test number three was 144 meg. Let's now plug in that ethernet cable. Now, let me just take this opportunity to say a massive thanks to all of the new members of my channel. Your support really does mean a lot. And if any of you guys want to sign up, I'm doing a special promotion for the first 100 members whereby all of you can join my private chat group. And in this chat group, we can talk about stuff, we can provide support to each other, and we can even share our APKs. So some of those applications, some of those toolboxes I'm working on, you guys can get early access to them. So if that sounds of interest to you, do have a look out for the join button. Thank you. Okay, so Ethernet plugged in. Let's now open up the speed test. And there you can see on the top left, it is detecting a wired Ethernet connection and we're getting closer to 200 meg. Okay, so test number one, we have 193 meg downstream on wired. Let's do test number two. Okay, so test number two, we're getting around about 219. And the final test, and the last test, we get 219 meg downstream. So I think it's quite clear that we can see a wired connection does give you typically better performance and a more stable connection. But we'll just add that disclaimer that it's not going to be a one shoe fits all. So if your Fire Stick is very close to the router, then you may actually get better speed using wireless compared to let's say 100 meg ethernet. So it is worth testing out, but typically you do get more consistent speeds when using a wire compared to wireless. Okay, let's back out of that. And also where it says show all applications, if I click on that, you can actually just say, show me the USB only application. So you can clearly see what's already installed on the USB drive. 
And of course, moving something from USB back to internal storage, I can just uh, click on something, click on move to internal storage, and within one click, the application is now moved back to internal storage. And we know with the 4K Fire Stick, all of this kind of stuff requires manual ADB command. So that's all for this video, guys. Many thanks for watching. If you did find this video useful, then do give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more tutorials for the Fire Stick Lite or the NVIDIA Shield or really any of these Android devices, then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell. As always, I always appreciate your likes, your shares, your comments. So do let me know what you think. Leave me a comment below and I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.